I, I thank my uh, good friend from um, from Nevada for her thoughtfulness and, and both of you for scheduling the hearing. Um, I have a piece of legislation on the calendar, S4189, the Water for Conservation and Farming Act. What we try to do is build on existing programs and then provide new tools to expand, improve, and repair water conservation infrastructure, pipes and sprinklers, and do it with a focus on reducing water use and improving fish and wildlife habitat and trying to make uh, uh, farming um, more efficient. Obviously, farmers and ranchers are very conscientious right now about the resources they use. We're all Westerners. We know that, especially water is the lifeblood of the West. And right now in Oregon, 35 out of 36 counties are seeing at least some level of drought. And of course, with climate change causing uncharacteristic uh, weather events, we as a country have to be mindful about uh, using uh, precious uh, resources. So Senate 4189 seeks to address those concerns. Dan Keppen, why don't we start with you? It is great to have you here again. You have put enormous sweat equity into the basin over the years, and we've been through lots of tough uh, battles uh, uh, together, and we're so grateful uh, for your help on drafting 4189. Uh, several of the bills we're reviewing today make changes to Water Smart Smart by expanding program eligibility to nonprofits. There may be some challenges making sure we can address concerns for farmers and ranchers because we want to make sure that they're currently eligible for funds they're being taken care of. You and I have worked on this specifically. Can you talk, for example, about how 4189 responds to your members? Sure, Senator, and, and thank you for your leadership. It's been uh, 20 years you and I have been working together, starting in the Klamath Basin. Hi. Um, so right now, um, uh, the Water Smart program, again, I, we believe it works, uh, particularly um, when you look at what's happening in Central Oregon, uh, up at the Yakima Basin, there's lots of great examples where constructive conservation groups are working with farmers and ranchers um, to improve the profitability of producers and put more water into the system. Um, we had a chance to review your draft bill and talk to your staff as you were putting this together. And we were concerned about um, having, you know, nonprofit groups being able to apply for these monies on their own, uh, just because we were concerned that they might have different uh, uh, objectives than our irrigation district managers did, for example. What your bill does is it says, um, conservation groups are, are welcome to apply, but they need to do it in sort of partnership with a local water entity that has that authority to deliver water. So they work together, and our experience shows that those sorts of partnerships uh, really lead to creative solutions with, with broad community and, and political support. Great. So thank you. Real, real quickly, and we look forward to working with you in our next uh, uh, Oregonian, uh, Joe Whitworth with the Freshwater Trust has uh, done terrific work all the way through the West, especially in Oregon. They look at multi-benefit water conservation projects and it helps farmers, improves habitat for salmon and, and wildlife. Can you, uh, Joe, walk through some of the provisions of 4189 that would help freshwater trusts uh, ensure that the water projects that are proceeding um, on the ground generate the maximum amount of environmental benefit for the least amount of cost? We're losing you. We, you may be muted. Thank you, Senator. Appreciate the, the time uh, and the effort uh, to figure out an integrated way to look at water management in the West. Uh, certainly, uh, we can't do one thing without the other. And for, uh, for uh, 4189's part, one of, the, one of the sections of the bill that we like the most, of course, is Section 204B, which establishes a grant program uh, and prioritizes the multi-benefit projects that, uh, that hold the design, implementation, and monitoring of outcomes of habitat improvements. We think that is a, an incredibly good step forward. And we also think that it can be improved just a little bit to get into more uh, quantified outcomes, simply because we don't want this to become a box checking exercise in the same way that some green infrastructure projects that we've seen with programs like SRF and others uh, have become. So I think there's it's a great 
platform to build upon and really do appreciate the time. And we, will, we will work closely with both of you. I want to thank uh, Senator Cortez Masto again for the favor of letting me uh, go and uh, Chair McSally very much appreciate the hearing and look forward to working as we always have on this committee in a bipartisan way to, uh, to address resources issues. And I thank you both.